Welcome to Death Clam Games. This is Sean. We're talking about uh, the game we're developing. We don't have a name for it just yet. Um, you know, it's kind of like Dungeon Adventure, except this one was set in the forest. And uh, I think the big thing that we changed this time, and that I think was like really important, was that we each, uh, when we went to a different room, in this case, it was a forest, so it was like a forest clearing, I guess. Different forest clearing? Yeah, forest clearing. Each time we went to a different forest clearing, we would draw the other person's clearing and, like, say what was in it. So it did feel like you were exploring more and that you didn't necessarily know what was going to happen. Okay, I yeah, I remember the first time and you were going to draw my room. Mm -hmm. It was my move. You were going to draw my room. And you just drew a room. And I'm like, no, it has to have stuff in it. And, and, you know, we found out it was fun, I think, to have your partner draw the room and put in, you know, they're not like great, amazing drawings here, but they do give a little feel of it. I like that. There's like a little spring and then there's a little oasis and a little campfire. I don't know. It's kind of fun. I closed my eyes while Sean drew, you know, my next place that I got to go. That was super fun. Yeah, and that's kind of what we wanted to get in the game, which was that, you know, it was unexpected. It, You know, even, I don't think there's any way we could use, like, tables and, you know, rolling dice to produce something, you know, as cool as what, you know, the other person's going to produce, you know. We're not going to know what it is, right? Okay, so I think maybe one of my favorite parts, in the part that helped me, too, just overall is knowing kind of what we were going to draw by the chip that we drew. We knew green was what a spring. Yeah, green was a spring. Green is a spring. Red was a bridge. a bridge, like for an encounter with something. Right. And a uh, blue was a cave, something where there'd be lo loot. Doesn't have to be a cave per se, but you know, a loot room. Mm -hmm. And then an inn. So, and then we didn't have an inn, and we had a campfire. But I just liked kind of being given a strategy for it or given something to draw but then also uh you know being able to have the freedom to make whatever landscape we wanted i thought that was a lot of fun yeah i thought that was fun too we just decided we were going to be in a forest at this point you know i think that's generic enough where it can be any kind of forest there's you know it's a magical fairy forest or whatever so but really it could have been anywhere and, you know, we could have, we made up, you know, different sets of encounters. Like, as we went along, we found a barrel, you know, that you could smash for loot. I think that's a, you know, a pretty basic, you know, type of thing. And and we found a hammer and a, a potato sack. So we were wearing a potato sack and carrying around a hammer that we found in a barrel. You know, I liked that. It really felt, you know like something I'd expect to see in an RPG that I was playing and fun. It was fun to find this stuff and make it up. And I don't know, I can see going a million different ways with it and having a nice outline for a nice fantasy story, I think is great. But then we get to kind of make up the story as we go. I do like that. Yeah. And I like that. I think uh, the way it is now, especially with us just making up each other's stuff, we could even, it needs a kind of a structure, I think, like you said. Like, we needed to know it was in a forest, kind of. And each of the things had to have a kind of a basic thing, like an inn, even if it's, it manifests as a campfire. Risk That's the idea, you know. Risk, reward, penalty. Right. Know? And then you have to sort of succeed at each encounter and get something, or else you don't, and something negative happens to you. So that's the way we structure the encounters, too. But yeah, I felt like we were in the world and we were making up stuff. You know, we made up the giant clam with, you know, the pearl treasure inside. And then realized even that, you know, using the hammer, we wouldn't have to fatigue one of our chips. So there's already been, like, interaction that we didn't, you know, expect. Like, we didn't realize when we created the hammer that you could, like, just smash the clamshell. I like that there are rules and there is structure to it. You know, the the... the the bonus that the hammer gave us, which we created before we were in that situation, was cool because then it interacted with, yeah, the clam, which we didn't create knowing about the hammer. But I like the fact that these things are emerging. Strategies are emerging in it. That's fun. So to have both of those is really cool. I think that's difficult to have both the strategy 
and the story that that changes every time we play it. I don't know. I'm glad. I think it's going a good direction. And then, of course, the next step is um, we're going to get a dry erase board, I think, so that the map can take any form, really, that we need it to. I think the different colors, we'll get a whole, like, set of different color markers, too, so that, you know, we can have all kinds of different terrain types. Like, already we had, like, water. You know, we had a spring. We had, like, a grotto. You know, we're in a forest, so, you know, maybe the walls would be green, whatever. But... Yeah, I think the purpose of this game is to be fun and immersive for sure. And I think that'll be even easier if we have, you know, like different colored markers and it looks nice. Because I think the looks are going to be an important part of this to actually bring you into it. Also, well, we ordered those colored markers, right? Did we place the order for them? I can't remember now. I, I, we'll have to check and see. I hope so. Yeah. But what I like is that we've associated a color mm -hmm. with... Um, with a stat yes. and we've also associated a color that's a chip with you know with an action which is either like strength strength but we've also associated it with like fighting or with health right. you know so that means one chip can carry multiple types of information right. and i think that gives us a lot of room to play it was great because we sat here on the couch and we played it you know, you had to draw, and that's just the way it's going to be. Unless, you know, the dryer. Oh, no, I drew too. Yeah, it was fun, wasn't it? I liked drawing, but it wasn't the whole, I didn't, you kept tabs on the score and stuff like that, and our health and everything. Yeah. You know, but that's not too tough. It's just a tally if you've got a dry erase board. I don't even mind doing that. Right. Yeah, I'd like to keep the accounting to a minimum, but that's something that I'm definitely willing to do to, you know, make the game fun. I've always, you know been able to do that and nobody likes doing accounting in games you know with no uh gm you know we don't really want there to have to be a game master though so like in the end we're gonna have to maybe distribute the accounting among the players like if you think about it or like in in our case for me and you obviously i'm gonna do the accounting in the game because you know that's just the way it is right but i mean if other people were to play it for instance i think it could be like distributed if I were playing it with somebody else, I wouldn't mind doing the accounting. I So far, I don't think, you know, I'd like to come up with some... You were kind of recording... Hit points. Well, hit points wasn't too much. I don't mind doing that, you know? I keep mm -hmm. tally for Scrabble and Pinochle and right. that level of accounting I'm fine with. Even a little bit more. Some notes, like I said. We have to write down, like, what inventory we get. Like, we had to write down that we had the hammer and the potato sack. The hammer and the potato sack. Right. We did have to write those things down, but, um, you know, H for hammer. You mean we could do shorthand? I actually just wrote it down. Yeah. We can do shorthand or, I don't know. I don't we'll know, figure nice something out for it. I don't mind doing that. It's more thematic. Okay. Well, so far, that's that's fine. The writing it down. I don't think it's been too much. I don't know. I don't think you even, did you feel like a GM? It didn't feel to me like you were. Yeah, no, that was the whole point of us both playing. You know, and finally getting us both playing at the same time was that, you know, it was going to be created through um, our interaction. You know, it's not there wasn't a central. Yeah, I want the whole thing to be emergent. I want there to be a central person coming up with an adventure like we're coming up with the adventure together. You know, at first we were talking fairies, but part of what I really like about this so far mm -hmm. is that if I played this game with a, with somebody else, it would be a completely different game. Maybe we would be on a spaceship, right. you know, I, I don't feel like I'm tied to a specific world. And I kind of like that right now. I'm not really sure I want to make it super thematic. Mm -hmm. I Maybe guides on theme. Well, I think that's why we did the um, forest theme this time. I mean, you're right. We could do all kinds of different themes. I mean, if we went in a cave, it could be a whole nother thing or a dungeon or, you know, a spaceship. Yeah, actually. It might be nice to kind of keep it uh, theme neutral, but each time we play, we should know what we're doing, I think, because that was helpful in, in making the rooms. Like, I didn't have to think up stuff. It was like I was in a forest, you know, how many video games I've seen barrels laying around everywhere, you know, in a grotto and, you know. Mm -hmm. I guess the big thing I want to work on next time we do it, and I like how it's going, and I kind of want to keep the same structure that it has right now, um, but the issue I had is that denizens were not appearing. They were tied to the area. Mm -hmm. 
that we searched, right. which is fine. I want some events to take place that way, but I want Denizen's arrival to be independent of that. Mm-hmm. So that's what I want to think about for next time. Okay. And I think kind of what you're saying is just you want more Denizen's, like more interaction with NPCs. I, well, I want more interaction, but not just more. So it's not like I want to add more red chips so we have more encounters. I want encounters to be able to take place in any zone. I see. Not just the obstacle zone, which is the red one. But like in the in the inn, maybe there would be a denizen, like the innkeeper. Or like a, a traveling bard or something. Right. Like if, if we're at the spring, then the denizen might be somebody different than if we're at the inn or the campfire or something. Mm-hmm. But I want them to be appearing. I just want it to be a guaranteed appearance, you know, with the red token. OK, I see what you're saying. Well, we'll see what happens next time. So far, so good. I think it's actually getting to be kind of compelling and a little bit fun. I, I want to play it again. I'm at that point where I'm looking forward to playing it more. All right. Well, that's a good point to get to. It, it makes things a lot easier, I have to say. <laughs> anyway, um, that's it for now. So uh, from Death Clam Games. Good vibes. Till next time.